Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, September 27th, around 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time 2022. A surprise geomagnetic storm is helping to strengthen Ian, and that's the big story today. Ian is now forecast to land somewhere south of Sarasota as a Cat 3 storm. And we have all the details, so stay tuned. Let's run that through. Keep calm. It's boom time. So let's take a look. The current position, Ian has now passed completely over Cuba, was weakened considerably, um, and now is re-strengthening. So we're going to see an eye wall form here that is quite significant. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the solar wind is now pumping energy into our dynamic Earth system, which includes weather. So this is... a uh, could potentially impact the strength of the storm. It's gonna. It's making landfall now. The position is south of Sarasota, so that is the best guess for the position. As Hurricane Ian Ian is now a Cat Three storm, uh, made landfall on Cuba as a Cat Three storm, and Florida is bracing for the worst. Unfortunately, now here we do have some of the updates that have happened in the last two hours, and we'll run them through with you. Sarasota County officials warn the water will be shut off to two barrier islands. Uh, officials in Sarasota County have warned that the water will be shut off for residents on the barrier islands of Siesta Key and Casey Key on Tuesday night and will not return until it's all over. So make sure you have plenty of water if you're going to stay out there. And if you're going to stay out there, oof, buckle up. Florida Keys, find a safe place by 2 p.m., Florida Keys residents and visitors need to find a safe place to shelter by 2 p.m. Tuesday, officials said, warning that some emergency operations would be suspended once the wind speeds become dangerously high. So, Citrus County officials issue mandatory evacuation order. Officials in Citrus County, about 70 miles north of Tampa, have issued mandatory evacuation orders for residents living on the westernmost coast, including low-lying areas around U.S. Highway 19. Residents in other areas within the county, especially those living in mobile and manufactured homes, as well as recreational vehicles, are advised to get out of Dodge. That's a pretty good uh, idea. With winds at 125 miles an hour, you're not really going to survive it in one of those structures. And there it is. Hillsborough County issued mandatory evacuations for evacuation zone B starting at 12 p.m. and all residents in zone A and B. Those in mobile or manufactured homes and in low-lying areas prone to flooding must evacuate by 9 p.m. tonight. We're going to show you that evacuation map um, in just a second, probably right now. There it is. So we're going to leave you links down to, about knowing your zone. Zone A is the red zone and B is the zone orange right next to it. You can see that there are lots of people that are living in these zones. Um, and currently the track that we just showed you has landfall somewhere near Venice or Laurel in this region. And so anyone in the red zone or the orange zone is asked to leave from down here all the way up through Tampa. So if you live in any of these red zones I would get, or orange zones, I would get out of Dodge. And this goes all the way up into here. Take a look at this. So dangerous storm surge could be coming inland over 100 miles into Florida, as well as major flooding. And we'll get to some of those flood maps in just a second. Some of it shows up to 20 inches of rain. So we're going to leave you the inundation and evacuation map link below. It will say exactly that, the evacuation map. It's interactive. You can just click on it. So it's pretty easy to deal with. You can see down here, uh, probably not as major effects as the storm is going to be out here. Uh, moving to the north. Now, if you come over to our channel, the Oppenheimer Ranch Project over on the tweet box at Diamond the Dave, Oppenheimer Ranch at Diamond the Dave, links will be below. Thank you all of our new subscribers, about 80 in the last week. Uh, you can come here to click on the uh, evacuation map. You can come see here the storm from the International Space Station. Take a look at the size of Ian there. And you can also see the curvature of the Earth. Pretty amazing. You can share this with all your flat earth friends. So Hurricane Ian is now visible from the space station. And that's also a picture of earth for all the people that think we've never ha had a picture of earth uh, from a satellite there. You can actually watch the earth. Well, anyway, I don't want to get into that, but 
Hurricane Ian seen 260 miles below the space station as the storm was gaining strength. And it is a seven-minute film, so quite impressive there. Give me a thumbs up for posting that. Um, we also po just posted the most recent spaghetti models that we'll get to, and then you can look at the difference and see how they've tightened up and changed since yesterday. Now here we have, let's refresh this to get the most recent update. This is advisory number 18. Maximum sustained winds at 115 miles per hour. Hurricane Ian has now crossed through Cuba and is now sitting in the Gulf there and strengthening. Uh, let's take a look at their warning cones. Basically has landfall as a major hurricane at the same point place I pointed out before, somewhere around Venice there. That would be north of Tampa and south of Sarasota. So anyone on that barrier island really should not be there, in my opinion. This is going to be very devastating for the barrier island. So please get off of the barrier island if you can. And then you can uh, use this for U.S. rainfall potential, flash flooding, and other amazing things. You can see here they're showing 15 to 20 inches from Tampa Bay uh, all the way north. So that's going to be quite considerable. Here are the current spaghetti models. Let's make sure that this is the most recent run, and it is. And you can see all the areas that it's converging on, so from Tampa all the way up north. Heads up. It's, it may be coming. Actually, this is showing Fort Myers to Tampa. So from Fort Myers to Tampa in between those two areas. Heads up. Ian to impact Florida with multiple hazards this week. He is an expensive is expected to track over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico today before beginning to approach the west coast of Florida on Wednesday. So we're going to watch it strengthen, and we will know just how bad it's going to be in about 24 hours. Numerous weather hazards are expected in Florida with Ian. We have that space weather accentuation happening, unexpected as well. And, well, that could rapidly strengthen the storm. Dangerous, life-threatening storm surge Along much of the Florida West Coast, hurricane and tropical storm force winds, heavy rainfall and flash and urban flooding, and finally, there could be some tornadoes. So all of those potentials. Here we are looking at the GFS model for total precipitation, and it looks pretty crazy. So just a few inches, one to two inches uh, by Wednesday, but by the end of Thursday and into Friday here, ridiculous amounts of rain. We're talking 20 to 24 plus inches for many areas all the way inland there on the GFS model. You can see that. That is the area of flash flooding and, well, just dangerous floodwaters there. So looking for power outages everywhere in that region. And let's just click it over here to the European model, which shows a little less rain, but the same amount, 14 to 20 inches on the west coast here. Um, south of Tampa Bay, all the way up here towards like Cedar Key. So that's where the bulk of the rain, according to the European model is. And we'll go back and look at the GFS one, one more time. That's going from Cedar Key all the way down, down here to Fort Myers. So that's a huge area of 20 plus inches of rain. And that extends all the way over to the east coast of Florida. So heads up on those regions. Get out of Dodge. That's what I would do. Here's the map. Here's Cedar Key, the top point of that heavy rain, all the way down to Clearwater, St. Petersburg. So this is the main area of inundation. We're talking the villages, Leesburg, Ocala could, could see 20 inches. Brooksville, Crystal River. This is the 20-inch zone up here in the Ocala National Forest. Could go all the way and devastate portions of Orlando, Claremont. So that is the area that we're focusing on for the major floodwaters, as you can see there. <clears throat> now, that's the best we can do, and stay tuned for more updates on the storm as it develops. We can come over here and run through uh, what has happened in, happened in the last several hours here. This is the storm moving across Cuba at about 5 a.m. And this is the uh, Zoom Earth where we're looking uh, at the Hurricane Ian overlay. You can see these bands, huge bands. Carl Springs, Miami getting uh, heavy rain. Southern Florida already picking up the rain now for the last 24 hours. They're not going to be the hardest hit. As these rains, Port St. Lucie uh, seeing a patch here. It looks like Cape Carl is about to get 
could be raining there right now as we're speaking because this is at now 10 a.m. And here we can see it uh, now all parsed up. That rain, heavy rain hitting southern Florida, and that is going to be moving to central Florida starting today and lasting for the next several days. So heads up, and please, if you can, get out of harm's way. Now, snow hit Colorado this weekend. Here's a nice shot of Long's Peak, and we do have more snow coming in the forecast. As there has been a revelation on the Moose Fire, guess what? It was caused by man. Yeah, someone left a smoldering campfire, and that caused more than 130,000 acres to burn in Idaho, unfortunately. Seismic update. We had a little flurry of activity a little bit ago. Nothing major. Mid-ocean ridges moving. Some activity on the West Coast. As we check out the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, we do have an uptick at Rainier in, over the last 15 days. There have now been 28 quakes over the last 30 days. That's a significant uptick of about 50% as Rainier is rocking. And we also have a... The similar amount of activity at St. Helens, but no uptick with 45 quakes in the past 30 days. So those are the most two significant earthquake uh, volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest with activity. And you can see the most activity happening here around Rainier, not down by St. Helens. A little bit of activity at Hood, but Mount Rainier has picked up in two places, not only near the caldera, but out here in the area where we would see some of the major flood events happen if Rainier were to erupt. Worldwide Volcano News updates. Normal eruptive behavior happening from most of the active volcanoes. We do have one allayed volcano uh, in the northern Kuriles, or Kuriles with explosive activity and strong thermal anomaly in the crater. So let's take a look at that image before we go here. And you can see that thermal activity. There's the island and you can see all that black ash and soot. So quite an active volcano allayed in the northern Kuriles. Now we have space weather update. Unexpected geomagnetic storm that was not in the forecast. What was in the forecast was a coronal hole. And that is coupling with us uh, while this little stealth CME sideswiped Earth's magnetic field. And it did spark a G2 class geomagnetic storm. Here you can see some of that aurora in Iceland being triggered by that geomagnetic storm at G2 here, KP6. And now we've gone in and out of geomagnetic instability over the last 12 hours. So we'll keep a close eye on that. As you can see, the plasma speed here has now gone all the way up towards 600 kilometers per second. This is helping accentuate Hurricane Ian, the last thing we need. It looks as if this is going to last for a while. Look at this, Look at this density spike all the way up here to the magnitude 100. That's pretty high. And that's what sent that KP6 off. So this energy is now being translated into Ian, which will be, probably make landfall as a stronger storm than initially thought. They were saying Cat 2, now it's up to Cat 3. And we will stay tuned for the next update on the forecast. As you can see here, the sun is generally quiet. There are no very little flaring going on, even though there are spots peppering the disk. Now, good news. For the last year, we've been reporting on how everything is been toxified by forever chemicals, including most of the soil on Earth, all of the rainwater, and it is just a sad day. These are uh, cancer-causing chemicals. They're disruptors of the nervous system and the endocrine system, and they're just bad news. But good news, a naturally occurring soil bacterium may provide a solution for PFAS, these forever chemicals, which is pretty... Awesome. Commercially used per and polyfluoroalkalized substances, PFAS, were developed in the 1940s and made their way into a variety of common household products, including nonstick pans, plastics, rubber manufacturing, food wrappers, umbrellas, firefighting foam, and more. But they're also forever chemicals due to their resistance to breaking down in both the environment and human body. PFAS have been discovered lingering in rivers, Arctic ice, human breast milk, and in the blood of 97% of Americans. Most troublesome is their potential impact on human health. PFAS has been linked to metabolic disruption, obesity, diabetes, immune suppression, and cancer. So, now surprisingly, the bacterium was also able to use the fluorine-containing byproducts to build lipid bilayers or cellular membranes, which indicate that we don't know yet all of what we should about the fate of this type of compound in biological systems. So, 
Pretty interesting work here, and let's hope and pray that they come up with a solution to those forever chemicals. Now, have you heard? Last night we published on Magnetic Reversal News an update on NASA and the DART mission because NASA just crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid to see what would happen, and it was successful. But even more successful is that a telescope, Telescope Atlas, caught it in real time, and we have the data to show you because there was another CubeSat following the DART mission, which has video, but we won't get that for a week. And it will be much clearer than this video from Atlas, but Atlas certainly caused it. So here's Didymos and Deimos, and that's the impact. You can see here the, the blast. It was quite an impact from this little satellite. This tiny rock is just about 550 feet across. So what's coming in here is a CubeSat blasting into it and sending a shockwave off. Pretty fantastic. Good work, NASA. Can you believe I just said that? And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Thank you to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, our new subscribers, and the heroes that share this video. We love you. Oh, and if you're in Florida, please get out of harm's way. We do these videos so you can see very clearly from the data what may happen and why you need to prepare. Be safe. We love you.